Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of Graphic Novel Fan Art Reviews. I'll be posting these videos once a month, so for those of you who have seen it already, January's graphic novel was Anya's Ghost. I'll leave a link for it here if you'd like to go back and watch that. This month for February, the graphic novel fan art review is by Katie O'Neill and Oni Press, and it's a book called The Tea Dragon Society. And can I just say right off the bat, I absolutely fell in love with the art in this book. I own Katie O'Neill's last book called Princess Princess Ever After and was so excited when I saw the Tea Dragon Society on the shelves of my local bookstore and I bought it immediately. Starting off with the art in this book, every page is just so well thought out and the colors are so beautiful. If you haven't seen her previous book, Princess Princess Ever After, it is also a cute short story, but the art for the Tea Dragon Society is just slightly different in the sense that there is practically no black line art, which gives the story the soft and gentle look that I really, really love. I'm so jealous of this art style of coloring because I, as an artist, rely so much on line art and in this book the shapes and characters really rely on color to make it pop. To me, there isn't a boring page in this book and after reading it the first time I went back a second time just to stare at the details and all the bright colors. As far as the story is concerned, be prepared to finish this book quickly and in one sitting. If you are even thinking of buying this book, buy it before going home and reading it because you will finish it so fast. I mean, the art alone might make you buy it even if you do read it first because it is just so charming and pretty, but from a story standpoint, there isn't a whole lot to this book, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just makes you feel like you're taking a tiny peek into this world. The story itself is really simple, and it's about a little girl named Greta who finds out about a tea dragon society where if you drink the tea leaves from the dragon's horns, you may be able to see memories of the dragon and the people in the dragon's life. Greta learns how to take care of tea dragons while also learning to be a blacksmith from her mother, and in the end, well, you will have to read that part for yourself. It is a very short story, but in the end, you will find yourself being really charmed by the characters and wishing there was more to read. There are some neat pages in the back of the book that tell you about how to care for tea dragons, which gives you a little bit more about the world that these characters live in, and it also has descriptions about the tea dragons, like their personalities, and also shows some tea dragons that weren't even in the book. You can tell that Katie O'Neill put a lot of love and thought into this world and has, in fact, posted more about the Tea Dragon Society online where she's asked her readers what questions they might have about the Tea Dragons for a future zine that she wants to make. I really love this artist and can't wait to see what she makes next. She is set to release another book that so far is untitled and there's no information about it that's supposed to come out in fall of this year in 2018. I would give this graphic novel a 4.5 out of 5 for the gorgeous artwork and incredible characters and design and a really cute story that tells you what you need to know about the society and its characters but has you wishing for a lot more. I would recommend this book to children and adults that appreciate the kind of Ghibli style that is shown, but I would warn against it for younger viewers or have them read it with their parents because there are a couple mild fighting scenes with blood in it, but that's about it. So for this illustration, I chose to draw the two characters we see the most in the book, which is Greta and Minette. I absolutely love these girls and their designs. I had a wonderful time doing the sketches and thumbnails of them leading up to this drawing, but made a couple of silly mistakes on the way. I tried to replicate the style as best I could with minimal line art, but ended up 
doing the opposite of that and lining the whole picture with colored pencils, which makes it look softer, but doesn't obviously match it exactly. Had I done it digitally, maybe I would have had more success, but that's how it went. <laughs> Overall, I think it turned out kind of cute, but there are some things I would fix looking back, like maybe how Minette the girl with the pink hair, how the dragon is sitting on her shoulder. I probably should have added more shading to give it more depth, but I had a lot of fun with this though, and I hope it piqued your interest in the Tea Dragon Society so that you might go and check the book out for yourself. I'll leave a link for Katie O'Neill's website in the description, as well as a link to where you can buy her book, The Tea Dragon Society. You may notice that once again I have my phone out filming part of my drawing. That's because I post short progress videos as well as final images on my Instagram before they go up as speed draw videos on my YouTube channel. So be sure to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or Twitter if you want to see my work before I post my videos. Links of course for all of that stuff are in the description. So I did get a question on my last video, the uh, Link speed painting video, about why I use red lead. So one of the reasons why is because it's not reflective like graphite lead is, so you don't see a glare when you're trying to look at your drawing, especially when you're making a video and you have the light directly hitting the paper. It also, at least for me, disappears better when I paint with watercolor. I tend to be pretty heavy-handed and the red doesn't seem to show up as much as when I use like regular lead. Uh, when I scan my image too, the scanner can pick up other colors more than the red sketchy stuff and so it helps me to not have to clean up as much um, as I would with regular lead. I do still sketch with regular mechanical pencils, but that's usually when I'm like making a comic or something. Um, but when I'm painting, I find that sketching in red helps me a lot. Actually, Bailey J has a video with a lot of good points that are similar to mine, so I will leave a link for her video in the description as to why she uses red lead, but there are other YouTubers if you just type in red lead or like why an artist uses red lead, there's a lot of really good ones. Um, this was a great question that was asked by Rogue Ninja Senpai. Who I believe I may have pronounced their name wrong in my last video, but I'm not sure. It's spelled Rouge, but I think it's meant to be Rogue, so I apologize if I, if I said it wrong. And holy cow, you guys, I have been getting so many amazing comments from all of you. And also, we reached a hundred subscribers! I seriously can't believe it happened so fast. Thank you guys so much. I think for every milestone, I will do an extra short video with just like a speed drawing. Thank you guys for your support. So expect that video to come in the near future. As far as shoutouts go, I will make shoutouts in my Free Draw Friday videos so that it gives the previous video a week to get comments so that it means that my next shoutout will be this Friday for the next Free Draw Friday video. I am not sure when my next graphic novel review will be, but I will be uploading it for the month of March during my spring break, which starts on the 16th, so somewhere between the 16th and that following week afterwards. So be sure to look out for it towards the end of next month, but I will mention it in one of my Free Draw Friday videos in the near future and let you guys know when it's coming out. So that is it for this episode of Graphic Novel Fan Art Review. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and I hope that we can draw together again soon.